Hi, my name is Keenan. And I'm Dominique. And you're listening to Saving, Saving Lives, Lives with, with Drones. Drones. This is episode number eight. Yep. And that's pretty awesome, I think, don't you? I think we're moving along pretty pretty good. Yeah, we are. I think um we just you know, just got a lot of content that we're starting to get out there and a lot of information's you know, coming out. A lot or? of information. Uh look just on our last episode we talked about the National Public Safety Conference and the first one. Yeah, that was um that was a lot of great information from there and just 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 overwhelming. Well we're gonna talk about those different things um, more in detail about different things that came out of that conference mm-hmm. in our future episodes. Uh, before we get started with this one, though, gotta thank somebody. We do. Who do we gotta thank? Thank, 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 thank? Oh, sponsors, sponsors, sponsors. Yes, Skyor Aero Imagery Services. Hmm. Uh, once again, they helped pay the bills. Gives us wonderful studio, camera equipment, microphones, and we're very, 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 very thankful. Even our little flags for our phones, yes, awesome. for our microphones. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah, th- thank them and uh, always very thankful for their for their efforts. Of course, of course. So you had an interesting question. I have an interesting question. What do you need to fly by an airport? Well, that's an interesting question because with the current 107, even if you're a public safety agency where you can get like a public COA, if you get like a blanket COA, you're still restricted from flying to, to an airport. Mm-hmm. Now, you can get something called a jurisdictional COA mm-hmm. that may allow you to fly next to an airport or not, but it's going to require um, a bunch of different uh, uh, procedures. Mm-hmm. But if you have to go to an area that is outside of your jurisdiction and then fly over there, what do you do? Mm-hmm. Or if you're in a, a, blank, a blank COA that covers the entire United States, what do you do? And that's a really interesting question because 107 pilot, part 107 pilots have the same issue. If a part 107 pilot wants to fly, let's say near a major airport, it can take them three months to get approval. Oh, really? The problem is during the emergency scene, you don't have three months. Yeah. So what the FAA had in the past was this concept of what they called an ECOA. Mm. Stand for emergency co-op. Mm-hmm. And what this was, was you would basically, if you had a public co-op, so that mm-hmm. was a requirement. So if you're a part 107, you couldn't get one of these. Right. If you had a public co-op, you can go ahead and make a phone call and get special permission and talk to the control tower. And within, the idea is like, they, they basically say within an hour, they would get you this e which even mm-hmm. that can be too long. Yeah. Uh, too long for an operation. So the FAA r- recognized this. And then the FAA finally said, you know, we need to come up with a better way. So they have. And we actually found out at this conference. In fact, probably at the time you were actually recording this, it may already be out there. I haven't checked in the last couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, in the last couple of days. Uh, but it's supposed to be sometime this month, in March, that this new thing is coming out and what they're calling it is a special government interest hmm. and what it basically it's it's basically was formerly known as the ECOA and what it is is that uh, no matter what it is it could be an emergency scene but it could be a, something related to homeland security it could be something related to national defense mm-hmm. um, law enforcement um, you know some type of uh, critical infrastructure and basically says you need to fly a drone and something that is Let's say near the White House. Right. Let's say there's a legitimate reason to fly near the White House. You can't do it right now. You can go make this call for a special government interest, get approval to fly. There are some catches, though. Uh, first of all, um, well, the one good thing about it is that you can be a public or civil operator and get this approval. Okay. As a public entity, you just basically, because you're a public entity, and if you have the right to fly there, that's the key thing, right? Mm-hmm. You can get get that approval. There could be stipulations from the airport. Let's say there's a downed aircraft. They're probably going to close that part of the airport or mm-hmm. that runway or whatever anyways. There's a downed aircraft. Um, but there could be other stipulations like, you know, things of national security or defense. If you don't have the rights to fly, you're not going to get the, this approval. Right. But if you're a civil agency, you can also get any, um, sorry, the special government interest. Mm-hmm. And you get this 
by being sponsored by a public agency. So okay. if I'm a fire department and I don't have a drone program, right. but I know that Skyor does have a drone program or they have drones and they're mm. within my community, I can call on Skyor and say, hey, can you fly this drone? And say, hey, no problem, but you want me close to this you know, class D airspace or mm-hmm. some type of restricted airspace. And they can go, no problem, we will sponsor you. And basically you kind of get on the phone with you know the incident commander, the FAA, mm-hmm. and say, hey, and, and Skyro said, we want Skyro to do X, Y, and Z. And Skyro says, yes, I agree to do X, Y, and Z. And they give them, the, the FAA will give them stipulations. And within a few minutes, hopefully, that's what the goal of the program is. In a few minutes, you're going to get the proper approval to fly that airspace. Mm. So does this mean that every public agency just wants to pull any civil agency off? No, because I think that's a... a topic for a different discussion i mean because you definitely want to vet those in, um those uh civil right. ag- agencies and you want to make sure that you know you know that they just they understand some of the things like nims incident management mm-hmm. and you know when they're on the far scene they, they actually are providing some kind of actual value they're just mm-hmm. not just buzzing around a drone just for for giggles right right so i mean there could be a place for for agencies that uh public agencies that don't have their own programs to use civil agencies, but mm-hmm. it's one of those things that um, you, you're going to have to do your homework, making sure that your that agency's you know legitimate and they can actually get the job when you get done safely. Right. So, how does this work? Well, there is a special contact number. Um, it's uh, we're not going to share it on this podcast, of course. But of what course. we'll do is uh, we I will tell you it's called the Special Operations Support Center. Mm-hmm. Um, you can. Look it up or contact your local FISDO office to get the number. Uh, just because when when I was actually I learned about this at that Virginia conference we talked about in the last episode, I'm just not sure if we're allowed to publicly. Right. Um, understood. Understood. Put the number, but if we are, we'll go ahead and go put it on the Saving Lives of Drones website if we are allowed to go ahead and do so. Um, but I still got to wait to talk with the UAS Integration Office to make sure that everybody's okay with making that number of course, public. Of course. But so whether the number is super squirrel secret or not, it's one of these numbers that as a public safety agency, you're going to want to keep it in your back pocket. Mm-hmm. You're going to want to have it there in case you need to have a drone operation of some kind, you know, because you never know. Yeah, home uh, residential structure fire, probably don't need, you know, not, not need it. Right. Big commercial operation, maybe uh, a train derailment, downed aircraft, search and rescue. Mm-hmm. Drones can be, be helpful. Nice. That, you know, drones can be helpful. Yeah. You know, again, make sure you pre-vet out those civil civil agencies, and I think we should. I think we should do an episode on that, like what it takes I, I actually. Too. I think it would be very helpful. Yeah, I think what what are the things you're looking for in a civil agency? To make sure that it can actually provide value mm-hmm. on the public safety um, scene. So, I think that's. Um, I think that's actually something that we will see with smaller departments. Mm-hmm. Um, in the very beginning, but I think over time, what you're eventually going to see is, I mean, you're not going to have to rely on public safety agencies. I mean, that's why for civil agencies forever. That's the goal. That's the goal. But while it's still in its infancy, I think we'll see a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's what we want to talk about today. So the whole concept of the, you know, wrap things up, ECOA going away. Mm -hmm. Special government interest is the kind of the new, the new thing. Um, And uh, it can be, achieved by both public COA, I mean, people flying under public COA, or by Part 107. Uh, so you could be a public safety agency flying under Part 107, and that's perfectly fine. You can, you can get that uh, get that special government uh, government uh, interest um, exemption. If you are a civil operator, you just have to be sponsored by a governmental agency right. that has the authority to say, yes, you can fly. Hmm. Uh, that That's, that's going to be the, the key thing. And again, if you're a government agency, you're looking at a civil operator, make sure you go ahead and vet them out um, ahead of time. So with that, I think we should wrap up this episode. A lot of information, but yeah. A lot of information. So with that, this was Keenan. And I'm Dominique. And this was Saving Lives with, with Drones. Drones.